We take the first step by observing the breath and body. And we do this over and over again, hoping that we will, with time, develop a deeper understanding of ourselves and our current state. In this way, we also learn to recognize what our next steps will be. So why do we care to see things clearly? Because when our actions stem from a superficial perception, we take action and then later have to admit that we were mistaken and the action is not proved to be beneficial. So that's the concept of self-inquiry or svadhyaya, and that's in a lot of traditions, a lot of uh, spiritual practices. So let's just start out seated in any comfortable position. Close your eyes, go inside, and take an inventory of what you're bringing with you to your practice. Start with that self-inquiry right now as you close your eyes. Come into the body. Notice where you have habitually held any kind of tension. Maybe the body's holding on to some old injury pattern. Maybe the tension naturally falls into the shoulders and the body has forgotten how to let it go. So consciously now just let the shoulders fall away from the ears. Bring your awareness into your breathing pattern. Inhaling through the nose very naturally and normally for now and out through the nose. In through the nose and out through the nose. So what is all this feedback telling you? What kind of information are you learning about yourself? Letting your head, which is, I don't know, about an eight to 10 pound weight, let your head be perfectly balanced on the axis of the spine so that the head doesn't want to fall forward or backward or from side to side. It feels light and perched upon your spine. Now with the, the shoulders down, the chest can be more open, your lungs are more available to take in the air and the oxygen. So we're going to start to practice a pranayamic breath called ujjayi breathing, which means victorious breath. So start to inhale more consciously through the nose and out through the nose. The next breath, make sure you're bringing the breath to the back of the throat so it starts to make a sound. And that the breath emanates from the back of the throat as it comes out. Inhale through the nose, but this time open your mouth and let that exhale come from the back of the throat. So it sounds like this. In through the nose. Exhale through the mouth, making a noise in through the nose. This time when you exhale, make that same noise, but close the lips and exhale through the nose. So it sounds like this. Inhale through the nose. Breathe to the back of the throat. Exhale through the nose from the back of the throat. Inhale, exhale. Mm -hmm. 
Now let your ujjayi breath go for now. Just take a moment and observe. If you felt like you got a little dizzy or hot because you're taking in more oxygen and your lungs are expanding, your diaphragm is working harder, just notice that. And if during your practice you start to get a bit dizzy, then just let that kind of ujjayi breath go. And we're just going to move to standing. So come to the top of your mat. Let the arms just hang alongside the body. No tension. Your feet are about hip width distance apart. But close your eyes. You don't need to look at your feet for now. As you close your eyes, pick up all 10 toes and spread them apart. Then place your pinky toe, middle toe, and then root down through the big toe so you're exaggerating your arch. This is easier to do with your socks off so that you can really Feel your soles of the feet into the floor and that arch come off the floor. Without looking, arrange your feet so that the first toe and the second toe are pointed to the top of your mat. Now, looking down, see if your feet are where you thought they were. Let's just input our hips. Sometimes one hip's higher than the other or you've had injuries. So our proprioception is a little off. Now rearrange your feet so that the first toe and the second toe are in fact facing the front of your mat and you can take a peek down. And once again, lift up all 10 toes, spread them apart, even if it's just an intention in your mind and then place the pinky toe, middle toe, and then root back down through the big toe. Now taking your right hand to the area just below your belly button, and then your left hand up directly across from the right hand on your back. Back of the hand into the small of the back, the right hand into the front. Start to rock your weight into the balls of the feet and then the back. Into the balls of the feet, maybe a little more, and then into the back. You're intentionally going to bring yourself off balance. And start to observe. You can even do this with your eyes closed if you trust yourself enough. Start to observe how you rock to the front, the back muscles take over to keep you stable and bring you towards center and then as you rock into your heels notice how the front muscles of the body take over to bring you back to center the body's so intelligent just be aware for a moment of how it's intelligent is keeping you safe and stable and always trying to bring you back to center now rocking from side to side. So just start to transfer your weight from right foot to left foot. This, the soles of the feet stay in the floor, but the weight is just transferring. So your knees might need to be a little soft as you sway from side to side. And you can hear, really feel it here as you move to the right, that left side body takes over. As you move to the left, that right side body takes over, always trying to bring you back to equilibrium, back to the center. Now arrange your body so that you are completely still. You can release your hands if they're still on your belly and back. Release your hands. Bring your body to a perfectly centered and neutral position. Now. Bring your arms wide around and up. It should feel good this morning. Give yourself this nice stretch and interlace your fingers, all the fingers except for the pointer finger. 
Start to move your arm bones behind you. Give yourself a little back bend here. Inhale. And now you're going to rock again back to the balls of your feet. Notice that this is a little more exaggerated. You turn into a back bend. Ball, rock into the heels of your feet. A little more exaggerated as the back takes over. And then start to rock from side to side. Feet start to take over. Each side taking the weight in. Right side, then left. Notice how the body just responds. Just allow it to sway back and forth as you wake up the body. And then taking your hands behind you after you come to some stillness. In, in, interlace the fingers behind you, bringing the fingers to the webbing and start to move the hands down below your tailbone. Maybe squeeze the shoulder blades together. Lift the heart, lift the chin. Nice deep breath into that opening heart. And then move the hands to your thighs, soft bend in the knees as you slide the hands down. Inhale the hands to the shins. Press your palms into the shins. Look up, take a breath. Exhale, slide the hands down towards the floor. Soft bend in your knees. Sweep the arms round, wide around and up. Reach up. Interlace the hands. Find your back bend. Inhale. Exhale. Sweep the hands behind you. Find your interlaced hands behind you. Open the heart. Release the hands. Slide the hands down the thighs, then the shins. Press the palms into the shins. Look up. Take a breath. Exhale. Forward fold a little bit deeper. Press your Feet into the floor, soft bend in the knees, sweep your arms wide around and up. Exhale, hands behind your back, interlace the fingers, open the heart, squeeze the shoulder blades together. Exhale, bring the hands to the thighs and slide them to the shins, press the hands into the shins, look up, come into this L shape, exhale, continue sliding the hands to the floor. Soft bend in the knees. Sweep the arms wide around and up. Exhale. Bring the hands behind you. Interlace the fingers to the webbing. Open the heart. This time start to forward fold. Squeezing the shoulder blades together. The hands come up maybe an inch or two. Maybe a foot. Doesn't matter. Should feel good as you observe your own practice. And then release the hands, soft bend in the knees, slide the hands back to the shins, look up, exhale, forward fold. Start to engage that ujjayi breath now. Inhale, in audible breath, lift up. Exhale, hands behind you. Inhale, exhale. Slide the hands to the shins. Inhale, press the shins into the hand. Exhale, keep sliding your hands down. This time you're going to twist to your right. So bend your left knee, straighten the right, look over the right shoulder. You can even move that left hand outside the right ankle as you twist, look up. Exhale, look down. Twist to your left to cross that right hand outside that left ankle. Look over the left shoulder. You can bring the hand on your waist or if that shoulder is okay, pick the arm up. Exhale, lower down. Soft bend in the knees. Sweep your arms wide around and up. Exhale, hands behind the back. Inhale, open the heart. Exhale, slide the hands down. Inhale, press the hands into the shins. Exhale, forward fold, a little deeper. Bend that left knee, straighten the right, twist to the right. Hand can come off the side. As you exhale, sweep that right hand down and across. 
Outside your left ankle, twist to your left. Straight left leg, bend the right knee. Exhale, lower down. Soft bend in the knee. Sweep your arms wide around and up. This is called a vinyasa practice as we move one breath, one movement. Inhale, open the heart. Exhale, slide the hands down to the shins. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, a little deeper. Forward fold. Twist to the right. Exhale, lower down. Make this a moving meditation. Inhale, twist to the left. Exhale, lower down. This time you're going to step your right foot back. Inhale, step that right foot up. Lower the right knee. Fingertips touch. Look up. Exhale, send the hips back as you flip that left foot up. Forward fold, half monkey pose. Inhale, bend the knee, look up. Tuck the right toes under, pick that right knee up and bounce your right foot up to left. Forward fold. Inhale, sweep the arms wide and around and up. Exhale, hands behind the heart. Inhale, bend. Exhale, fold halfway. Inhale, lift, press the hands into the shins. Exhale, a little bit deeper. Twist to your left this time. Exhale, twist to your right. Exhale, fold. Inhale, pick that left foot up this time, balancing on your right foot. Step that left leg way back, drop the knee, look up, fingertips touch on either side of your foot. Exhale, send your hips back, flip the right toes up as you forward fold over right knee. Inhale, lift up, touch your fingers to the floor, back to that first variation. Tuck the left toes under, step your left foot forward, forward fold. Press the floor wide uh, away as you reach wide around and up. Exhale, hands behind your back. Inhale, lift. Exhale, halfway fold, hands to shins. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, fold deeper. Inhale, twist to the right. Exhale, lower. Cross your hand to the opposite ankle. Twist to the left. Exhale, lower. Inhale that right leg up behind you. Drop that right knee way back. Drop the knee back. Inhale, look up. Exhale, send your hips back. Half monkey pose. Left foot flips up. Inhale, bend that left knee once again. This time we're going to come up into kneeling crescent warrior reaching the arms wide around and up find a little back bend here you're pressing through your hip bones exhale sweep the hands back to the floor tuck your right toes under right knee lifts and bounce your right foot up to left forward fold press the floor away reach wide around and up exhale hands behind the back Interlace your fingers, lift the heart. Exhale, forward fold, halfway. Inhale, press into the shins, halfway. Exhale, deeper fold. Twist to your left. Exhale, sweep your hand down, twist to the right. Exhale, lower down. This time the left foot lifts up. Step that left foot way back, drop the knee, fingertips touch on either side of your front foot. Look up. Exhale, send the hips back, flip the toes up, forward fold, half monkey pose. Inhale, fingertips touch. This time, sweep your arms wide around and up, your kneeling crescent warrior. Inhale, look up, a little deeper back bend. Exhale, forward fold. Plant the hands, tuck the left toes under. 
Bounce your left foot up to right, forward fold. Press the floor away, reach wide around and up. Exhale, hands behind your back. Inhale, back bend. Exhale, forward fold, halfway. Inhale, look up, halfway. Exhale, fold deeper. Inhale, twist to your right. Exhale, lower. Inhale, twist to your left. Find that moving meditation. You know where you're going. Exhale, lower. Inhale, pick that right leg up. Step it way back. Drop the knee. Fingertips touch on either side of front foot. As you exhale, rock the hips back. Straighten your left leg. Forward fold over left leg. Inhale. Bring the knee back over the ankle. Look up. Inhale all the way up to your crescent kneeling warrior. We're going to add one last pose on. Move that left foot in. Bring your palms together and twist to the left. You can stay here just twisting your belly and your torso to the left. Or hook that right elbow outside the left thigh looking up past that left elbow. One breath here, exhale, inhale, reach up, exhale, lower the hands, tuck the right toes under, pick that right knee up, and bounce your right foot up to left, forward full. Press the floor away, reach wide around and up, exhale, hands behind the back, find your back bend. Lead with the heart. Inhale. Find that Ujjayi breath. Exhale. Halfway fold. Inhale. Flat back. Exhale. Move the hands closer into a deeper fold. This time, twist to your left. Exhale. Cross that right hand outside the opposite ankle. Twist to your right. Exhale, lower down. Inhale the left foot up. Step that left foot way back. Drop the left knee. Fingertips touch. Inhale. Exhale, send the hips back. That right toes are flipping up, forward folding over that right leg. Inhale back to the first variation. Knee over ankle. This time including your crescent warrior. Lift up, find a back bend, and then move that right foot in a couple inches, hands in front of the heart. Twist to your right. You can either just bring your hand across the thigh or the hand to the back, or come in to a prayer-like twist, pressing the elbow into the thigh. Hands come down in front of the sternum as you look up. One breath, exhale, unwind, reach up, exhale, forward fold, unfurl the left toes, pick that left knee up and bounce your left foot up to right, forward fold, press the floor away, reach wide around and up, exhale, hands behind the back. Inhale, open the heart, and exhale, Tadasana, Mountain Pose. Feet hip-width distance apart, arms hanging off the shoulders, close your eyes, find your breath. The vinyasa flow is linking breath and movement. It's a beautiful way to warm up. Now we're going to take a wide stance to your right. So take a wide stance, toes kind of pigeon toe in, arms out into a T. So the ankles are right under your wrists. Turn your right toe out. 
and come into warrior two. We're going to do this more dynamically. So as you sink your hips down, working that right thigh to the floor, you'll need to take a wider stance, especially if you have long leg, a little wider. Turn, take that back foot back a little more, back to the back of the back leg. All right, now inhale, straighten the leg. Exhale, bend. Gaze and pass that right middle finger. Inhale, straighten the leg. Exhale, bend. Think about your tailbone lifting. And think about the tailbone dropping. So there's not the, a surfing action. It's more of a lift the tailbone up and exhale. This time when you come into a bent knee, stay there. Now reverse your warrior two, left arm down, right arm up, find a little side bend. And then coming into extended side angle for just a moment, softly light your uh, right arm down to your thigh, sweep the left arm up. And we'll go back and forth, reverse warrior two, exhale, maybe ujjayi breath as you lightly touch down, sweep the arm over. Couple more times, just flowing back and forth. Inhale when you come up. Exhale as you come down. Inhale as you come up. Exhale as you come down. This time hold extended side angle pose. Continue to breathe just as dynamically. Lifting up. Long time on that right thigh. Take a second here. Right toes in, left toes out. Arms to a T. Take a peek now. If your uh, ankles should be about under your wrists, so if they're not, just take a wider stance. Right toes should turn in so that you can release your hips and then bend into the left knee thigh. Tuck, just dropping the tailbone down. Inhale as you come up. Exhale as you lower. Inhale as you come up. Exhale as you lower. Inhale as you come up. Exhale as you lower. Now hold warrior two. Your gaze, your drishti is past infinity, past that middle finger. And now reverse warrior two, right arm down, left arm up, find a nice back bend. Exhale, lightly touch down, extended side angle. Sweep the right arm over the ear. Inhale, sweep the right arm down the leg. Lift up, exhale. Extended side angle. Inhale, reverse warrior two. One more time each side. Floating in to extended side angle. Inhale, lifting out. This time hold extended side angle pose. Reaching the right arm over the ear gaze. Your drishti is up into the right palm. And then lifting up, straighten the left leg, bring your toes in to face the long edge of your mat. Bring the hands behind you, interlacing your fingers, bring those shoulders away from the ears. So consciously bring some space between the earlobes and the shoulders and start to forward fold. Leading with the heart, maybe the hands come up a little, maybe a lot. You're pretty warm by now. You might surprise yourself that you feel supple, more supple than normal. The body likes to warm up gradually, but it's amazing how it responds. And then lower the hands if they're off the back. 
soft bend in the knees as you come up. And then taking that right foot to the left, coming to the end of your mat. So we're just going to come into a yoga squat. So bring your feet to the outside edges of the mat. The toes are going to turn out a little bit so that when you're starting to bend your knees, your knees need to track in the same direction as your feet so that you don't hurt your knees. Go into it slowly. Starting to lower down, a little tuck of the tailbone here. And if you're in your yoga squat, maybe bring the palms together into a little prayer-like pose. Close your eyes. Find your breath. Find the Ujjayi breath. Inhaling audible breath. Exhale through the nose, audible breath up from the back of the throat and then coming to seated bring your hands behind you extend your legs forward coming into staff Pose, Dandasana, maybe grab that flesh, pull it behind you. The legs are like one leg here. Hands come next to your hips. Feet are flexed. Legs rolling into one another. Close your eyes. Find your breath. So we're going to come into some dynamic intense western stretches or forward folds as we might say and sweeping the arms wide around and up like you're holding on to the sun here and you send your hips back and as you fold exhale inhale take that sun reaching up behind you exhale fold inhale reach up Exhale, halfway down, fold. Inhale, lift. Now this time you're going to bring your hands behind you. Normally as we come into an extent, intense western stretch, we're, we grab a bind or our, our shins or our feet. This time I'm just going to experiment here. Just bring your hands behind you. Backs of your hands may even drag on the floor. And start to use your breath alone to move into this deeper posture. Inhaling, you might notice the body lifts up a bit as you make space for that new incoming breath. And exhaling, forward fold. Inhaling, lift. Exhale, a little bit, bit deeper. Inhale. Lift, exhale deeper, inhale, lift, exhale deeper, and then lifting up, point your hands behind your fingers and towards the body, roll those shoulders out of the way, so you can choose either to come into a reverse table with the knees bent, just swinging your hips up, pressing the circles of the palms into the floor, skull falls back. Or if you're feeling a little more experimental and zesty this morning, legs are straight. You can come into reverse plank, point the toes, tuck your tailbone, draw your navel in, and lift the hips up, then drop the head back couple options. Be there for two or three breaths. Find that Ujjayi breath. Wherever you're at, lower down. And then extend your left leg out. Right foot comes in. You're going to cross that right foot outside left thigh. Coming into a twist. So it's kind of helpful 
to be aware with this left leg. If it feels too far out and you're not going to be able to get into the twist, maybe you move it in. You want that right foot to stay flat. Now with the nice tall crown of the head, lift up and then twist the whole torso to the right. Either hold on to the knee or hook that right or left elbow outside the right knee, twisting to your right. Look over right shoulder. Inhale a little bit taller, spine elongates. Exhale a little bit deeper into the twist. And then unwind, twist to the opposite way, and then come into the second variation. You're going to bend the bottom leg, and then come back onto your sit bones. Just let yourself marinate into this variation for a minute. If the hips are protesting, give it some time. Let gravity pull you into the pose instead of forcing it. And when you're ready, twist the belly and the ribs and then your right armpit to the right, looking over your right shoulder. And unwind to the opposite direction. We're going to come into half cow face pose. So for some people, this is a pretty intense variation, staying right where you're at. Otherwise, you're going to start to draw your feet to the hips and stack your right knee over left. And grabbing your feet. Keep drawing that right knee over left. You can start to forward fold. Now, if you're very loose in the shoulders, you can work towards a bind. So you would bring that right hand up and over, kind of walk your fingers down the spine, and then bring your left arm behind you and start to reach for a bind behind your heart and then fold, but only if you know your shoulders are okay. We've been working a lot on shoulder opening, so again, you might even be surprised to find your hands connect behind there. And if you don't have the bind, maybe fold a, an inch or two or three until the body needs to stop. Nice deep breath wherever you're at. Nice full exhale. Inhaling, coming up. Sweeping that right leg behind you. Coming into a pigeon prep. So in pigeon prep, you want to move your hip bones to the short end of your mat. They're in line. If you'd rather stay in sleeping swan, just fall over onto your left hip. If you know your hips are too tight for a full pigeon. If you're doing full pigeon, keep walking that back leg back until you're on to the top of the foot, shin, knee. Lift up onto your fingertips for a little back bend to get some length. And then maybe walk your hands out, maybe forearms, maybe elbows, maybe forehead come to the floor. Wherever you find yourself, take three deep diaphragmatic ujjayi breaths. Inhaling, exhaling, inhaling. Exhaling. Inhaling. Exhaling all the way. Let something go. And then plant the hands. 
tuck your right toes under and step your left foot back next to right now we're done take your time roll the arm bones in and then from the elbows down roll the arm bones out Coming down onto your mat, come back into seated. This time, extend your right leg out. Hug the left knee in. And then cross your left foot outside the right thigh. That right leg is active. This will anchor you and keep you a little more steady. And then twist your belly, your ribs. Your left arm to the left, looking over your left shoulder. Hook that right elbow outside the thigh or just hold on to the knee as you're looking over to the left and breathe. A little bit taller on the inhale. Exhale a little bit deeper in the twist. And then unwind to the opposite direction. Coming into the second variation of Marichyasana twist, sage twist. Bend the bottom leg and come back onto your sit bones in a nice straight spine. Let gravity slowly draw you to the floor, no forcing. When you're ready, twist your belly to the left and maybe find a, a hook or just hold on to the knee as you twist to the left. Inhale a little bit taller. Exhale a little bit deeper into the twist. And then unwind, one twist to the opposite side. Face the front and then stack your left knee over the right. You can stay where you are at or attempt to stack left knee over right into cow face pose. This is a pretty intense pose. So you could always stay where you are at, just play with it. You can stay here and start to fold. Or if you experimented with the bind on the first side, pick that left arm up, bend the elbow and reach for the little grooves in your spine and sweep that right hand behind you, working for a bind. It's helpful to do a little back bend here to get the bind if you're trying to experiment with it. And then forward fold. Maybe it's an inch or two, maybe not at all. Use your breath to be your barometer. You have the bind, release it. Stay on that right hip, sweep your left leg behind you. Either coming into sweeping or sleeping pigeon where you're folding over that right shin or straighten left leg out behind you. Your, your hip bones face that short end of the mat. Keep walking back leg back, coming on to the top of the foot, thigh, knee, Inhale up for a little back bend. This will get you, get you some length. And exhale. Walk your hands out, maybe elbows, maybe forehead. Coming into pigeon pose. Whatever variation you're in, where you've decided to settle on, take three deep ujjayi breaths. Inhale. Exhale. 
Inhale. Exhale audibly. Inhale. Exhale, relax everything. Let the breath go. And then plant the hands, walk your hands back to your knee, and then bring your soles of your feet together for Baddha Konasana, bound angle pose, soles of the feet together, heels in towards the groin, you can rock from side to side to kind of release the groin muscles. Gently in a relaxed manner. Start to fold forward with a straight back as if you're going to bring your belly button right into the feet. Come up and then come to sleeping tortoise variation. The soles of the feet stay together, but you're making more of a diamond shape with your thighs. Start to thread that wrist underneath the ankles, and this time with a rounded spine, forward fold. So the crown of the head is reaching towards the soles of the feet. This is one of my personal favorites because you can feel that connective tissue that surrounds your hip joints that you don't normally feel in, in most any other posture or throughout your day. And if your hands are th threaded underneath your ankle joints, remove them, bring your knees together, and then come all the way down onto your back. With the knees bent, just hug the knees into the chest. Hug them in on the exhale and then inhale, press the knees away. Arms straighten. Exhale, pull the thighs into the belly, into the intestines. Inhale, press the knees away. Exhale, pull the knees right into the descending colon and the organs that live below that diaphragm. Inhale, press the knees away. Last time, pull the knees in. This time, bring the arms out to a T. Take a nice deep breath in. And exhale the knees over to the right elbow looking over your left shoulder. Inhale the knees up and over to the opposite side, twisting to your left as you're eyes are looking in the opposite direction. Endeavor to have the eyes closed so that you can remain internally aware of all of the changes happening in your body without those external visual distractions. And then bringing the knees back to the center. 
bring the feet to the floor. If there's any last asana that would make your practice feel complete before shavasana, then go into it now. You'll have about 30, 40 seconds. Maybe it's happy baby pose, maybe bridge, maybe it's an inversion. Whatever speaks to you right now. You're on one side, make sure you even yourself out for the other side. Eventually making your way to Shavasana, legs extend out, reaching for the corners of the mat. Roll your head over to the right, and then tuck your left shoulder blade underneath you, and then roll the head over to the left, tuck your right shoulder blade underneath you, and then maybe from side to side, just to give yourself a little massage on that back of the skull, bringing some blood flow, some circulation in there, to those little capillaries, and eventually, let your head just rest into a neutral, centered position. Let your audible breath go. So you're back to natural, normal breathing. In through the nose and out through the nose. In through the nose and out through the nose. Relax all your facial muscles. Bring your awareness to the joint that keeps your jaw together. And let the lower jaw relax, maybe even your lips slightly part. Releasing the back of the throat. Bringing your awareness to the tongue. Let the tongue, the tip of the tongue, anchor itself very gently and barely just behind the two front teeth. It's still parted. your awareness to the facial, facial muscles, to the space between the eyebrow, flatten it out. And to the place where the hairline and the forehead meets, smooth the forehead out. to the scalp muscles that hold your ears. Let the scalp relax.
once again, just repeating Svadhyaya, which is one of the niyamas and the eight limbs of yoga. Svadhyaya is the process of gradually finding out where we are, who we are, and what we are. Our asana practice begins with precisely these questions. We take the first step by observing the breath and body. And we do this over and over and over again, hoping that we will, with time, develop a deeper understanding of ourselves and our current state. In this way, we also learn to recognize what our next steps will be. If you'd like to start to come out of your Shavasana, you can start to open and close your hands, just bringing some blood flow and movement back to the arms and fingers, and making circles with the wrists, and then letting the ankle joints join in the circular motion, and then stretching awake in a way that feels good and restorative. Stretching all the way from fingers down to the toes. Eventually bending one knee at a time and rolling over onto your right sides into a fetal posture. Let gravity support you. Let the earth support you completely. When you're ready, use the strength at the top hand to press yourself up back into a seated posture where we began. Any comfortable seat, any place where you can feel that you're not struggling against it and you have a nice straight spine, a nice current of energy all the way up through the crown of the head. Just for the last few moments, closing your eyes making a little bit of a comparison perhaps from the first time you became aware of your breath this morning. <laughs> if you'd like, you can close your practice on the mat by bringing your palms together in front of your heart. This is just a gesture of gratitude. Perhaps bringing to mind something you're eternally grateful for, something that adds value and joy to your life. And keeping that gratitude in your heart and mind We'll end with that traditional Sanskrit word that loosely translated means the inner light that lives in me bows to the beautiful lights in each of you. Namaste.